I love Doom Eternal. I'm not exaggerating when I say this game single-handedly threw me into the wonderful genre that is the movement FPS. It is an exemplary example of what innovation looks like, not just in the zoom zoom shooty pow pow niche of gaming, but in the video game sphere as a whole. I don't think it's even necessary to explain why, as I'm quite sure a majority of you peeps already feel the same way. However, we all know what made you really click on this video today. Whether you're here to find out what all the fuss about this big die game is, or perhaps you're a certified ultra killer just looking for ultra content to pass the time with. Hey everybody, the name's Aaron, and I love Doom Eternal, but I love Ultra Kill even more. Now, that is saying a lot. A game made by small indie dev Hakta, with the help from a couple of chaps, manages to win my heart over the big AAA title that is Doom Eternal. Why is this the case? I could say it's because of the music. While Eternal's heavy riffs and guttural chanting literally gets my blood pumping due to the sheer amount of adrenaline rushing through my veins, Ultra Kill's OST also does that in spades, and in a way that I really vibe with. Okay, just wait a little, gotta pop the mixtape in, and there. As a random side note, Ultra Kill is the main reason as to why music artists like Nana Ray and Machine Girl have now taken up such a thick chunk of my Spotify playlist, which you can check out in the description. Oh, okay, I'ma turn the lo-fi back on if you don't mind. That was a little bit loud. Anyhow, I could also say that it's due to the art direction. While I love the intricate, big budget graphic fidelity of Doom Eternal, the retro aesthetic of Ultra Kill hits just right. This is great for two reasons. Firstly, the game's gonna age great with such a timeless look. And better yet, because of the nature of this style emulating that of an older time, you can most assuredly run Ultra Kill on your grandma's 2010 Dell PC with extra potato graphics if you're into that as well. Finally, I could say that Ultra Kill just feels faster. With the myriad of movement options the game gives you, it is a fact that Ultra Kill allows players to really ping pong and super slaughter all over the arena. While Doom Eternal also allows players to zip around the place via the meat hook, a lot of Ultra Killers will agree that it pales in comparison to the Whiplash. This short list could be enough to sell the game to a new player. Furthermore, there are aspects of Ultra Kill that many people use in the context of pushing the idea that Ultra Kill is a quote unquote better game than Doom Eternal. This is especially due to how easy it is to point out said features at a surface level. That is not what I'm going for here. Firstly, enjoying one game and its features over the other is all about preference. And as we all know, preference is subjective. All the reasons I just listed out could be flipped on their heads, and in other words, someone else may love Ultra Kill, but they might love Doom Eternal even more. And that's perfectly fine. As long as you don't state your preferences in anything as hard truth, we're all goods here. What I will do today involves a much broader analysis of Ultra Kill, where we dive into the deep and expansive intricacies of how Hakita manages to deftly portray the Yeah, nah, I'm not smart enough to talk about those things. I'll leave that to the professional video essayists. For me, at least, I love Ultra Kill more than Eternal simply because this game makes me really have fun. But wait, isn't that exactly what Doom tries to do too? What are you going on about here, Eren? Well, let's talk about Eternal for a minute to help with explaining my point. See, it's very clear that the game places a big emphasis on the player finding the most efficient and effective way to dispatch an enemy. Take our cute little Kako Demon for instance. We all know that one grenade from your combat shotgun and a glory kill is typically what's best to take it out. When I first discovered this, I thought it was such a cool mechanic, and 
and I was really having fun with it until I started using this technique more often. Then, it just felt like I was using it out of necessity to get a quick kill. Unfortunately for me, this once unique and refreshing mechanic eventually lost all its charm over time. Now, it isn't really fun to use anymore. Look, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to say my experience makes this tech any less creative or objectively well thought out. It's just that the main reason I was having fun with it was because it was a unique and objectively well thought out means to an end, which was progressing through the game via killing an enemy. And you know what? Ultra Kill has a mechanic that I initially had a similar affair with. Let me tell you a little story. As with most people, I got into Ultra Kill after playing Doom Eternal for a while, wanting to see if there were any other games out there which could scratch my newfound movement FPS itch. You know what they say, variety is the spice of life and I love a good chicken vindaloo. Anyhow, enter Ultra Kill Demo. This music genre I'd never really heard of before was banging. The movement felt fresh as heck. I was loving Ultra Kill's take on healing by simply being next to an enemy and giving them the pew pew. Yeah, quick heads up for anyone who doesn't know, in Ultra Kill, you heal by dousing yourself in the fresh blood of your enemies. Very metal, especially considering you play as a robot. However, what I remember the most about my first time in the demo was trying out the Marksman Revolver's coin ability. It was love at first sight. <laughs> Simply put, the Marksman has an alt fire where you flick out a coin and if you shoot it, Good shot, mate! When I shot my first coin out of the air and landed it smack into an enemy's face, I thought it was such a cool mechanic and I was really having fun with it until I started using it more often. Then it just felt like I was using it out of necessity for the auto aim. Just like in Doom Eternal, the main reason I was having fun with this mechanic was because it was a unique and objectively well thought out means to an end, which was progressing through the game via killing an enemy. But that's how things ended for Eternal and where things started for Ultra Kill. Progressing through the game, whether killing enemies, platforming or puzzle solving, is something both FPS's have the players do. But Hakita asks, why stop there? No, this game is nicknamed Devil May Quake for a reason. Remember the whole coin shenanigan I mentioned? You see, there's an even cooler thing that you can do with the coin called a chargeback, where you reflect the laser beam of our friend Maurice here with a well-timed coin toss into said laser beam. If you want to literally learn all the ins and outs of this insane mechanic, please check out Heiser's video on chargebacks, as it teaches you exactly that. Top tier guide, and honestly, a great watch, even if you don't play the game yourself. Either way, awkward chilling aside, freaking awesome move to pull off, right? Finding out about this gave me a whole new thing to do with the coin, aside from looking up a bit and just shooting it. And that, friends, is why I love Ultra Kill more than Doom Eternal. Ultra Kill isn't just a movement FPS, it's a style FPS. Hakita will give us unique and well thought out toys to play with, and just when we think we're about to return it to him, he immediately hands it back with a small note saying, click the button on the bottom to make it backflip. Because Ultra Kill gives players awesome ways to style on the enemies being decimated, I slowly started to go from enjoying Ultra Kill's mechanics because they were unique and well thought out means to an end, and instead started enjoying Ultra Kill's mechanics as unique and well thought out style goals to achieve. Because this is the case, Ultra Kill has big replayability value. And of course, this means that I and many others feel very inclined 
to go further beyond. You know what? I'll take it. A challenge. Anyway, while this is very cool and all, it's probably quite safe to say that a fresh new Ultra Killer isn't going to be popping off 360 Ooga Booga chargebacks first day on the job. And for those who have already played the game a fair bit themselves, everything I've just talked about may be redundant if they're already satisfied or in fact unsatisfied with Ultra Kill's core gameplay. See, one could play the entirety of Ultra Kill without ever interacting with these crazier, more outlandish mechanics. Hell, this game can be beaten by simply spamming the revolver, or more likely for most people, playing Ultra Kill like any other FPS. And that's perfectly fine too. In fact, I play Ultra Kill a lot like Doom Eternal, particularly when I'm tryharding. However, as the obligatory loaded question for the end of this video, I want to leave you with this food for thought. At the end of the day, when you finish a session of gaming and sit back to reminisce about what just occurred on your monitor, ask yourself, did I play this video game just to beat it? Just to finish all the secret challenges in those missions? Just to climb a little higher on the leaderboard? Or did I play that video game because I just wanted to have pure, unfiltered fun?